Hello students, welcome to the course Verilog HDL. In the previous video, uh, we discussed the uh, what is meant by data flow modeling and we have also observed the continuous assignment statements that is the assign keyword how to use that and there are two variations in that implicit continuous assignment and net declaration implicit net declaration we have seen so now these to these three types of variations or assignment statements how to specify the delay so that is our interest in this video okay delays okay so we have also seen in gate levels okay how to specify delays to the logic gates same way now we are observing to the uh, assign statements okay delay values control the time between the change in a right hand side operand and when the new value is assigned to the left hand side okay so this statement is with respect to expressions we are going to take up after this okay so that expression we will be assigning a delay okay that will control the time okay the values changing and assigning to the left hand side there are three ways of specifying delays in continuous assignment statements okay so as we have studied first part three types of assign statement same way we have the delays regular assignment delay for the regular assign statement then implicit continuous assignment statement okay implicitly there is a call for assign statement right we have observed with example in previous video for that how we specify delay and then net declaration delay so this we will be taking up first the first method is to assign a delay value in a continuous assignment statement okay so normal assignment statement the delay value is specified after the keyword assign okay so and we are using a symbol called as hash okay so example here assign this is the keyword for data flow modeling then this is the operands okay so these are the operands in one in the two and out are operands and this and is an operator equal to is also operator and this side we call it as the right hand side and this side we call it as the left hand side and this together we call it as the expression okay so this is an assign statement what we have seen in the previous video so now what additionally we are learning is how to specify in delay so that is what this hash symbol we are using as in gate level modeling and the 10 delay okay so 10 time minutes is the delay so meaning what here so in one and in two so in one is having for example value zero and this is having a value one okay so zero and one what is the zero and one logical and it is a zero so this zero will value will be computed at the time of zero time unit at the zero time unit as soon as the value changes it will compute the value but assignment to the out okay so this zero value assignment to the out will happen after a delay of 10 time minutes okay so that is what the uh, idea here okay so computation will happen immediately on the right hand side okay but the assignment will happen after a delay of 10 so this we will see with a waveform so the same thing here explained here described in the below sentences okay any change in values of in one or in two will result in a delay of 10 time minutes before recomputation of the expression in one and in two. Okay, so next time, so it is zero one is there now. It may change the value now one one, right? So zero in one value may changes to one. So one and one is one, but this one value of computation will have happen after a delay of 10 time minutes. Okay, so that is also the meaning. The result will be assigned to out if in one or into changes value again before 10 time minutes when the result propagates to out the values of in one and into at the time of recomputation are considered okay so this property is called the inertial delay okay so that is what about the delay of an input pulse that is shorter than the delay of the assignment statement does not propagate to the output okay so if the input pulse is shorter than the delay so then the, and that does not propagate to the output so this is about the a delay statement so this same statement we will show it in a waveform so how it will execute okay so then you will be clearly understanding this delay part so we have in one and in two here okay and the values are shown okay so this is a zero okay so zero zero uh, up to 20 time minutes so then it becomes one one okay so then it is zero one so like that we have the change in values of the in one and in two so now zero zero the computation will happen zero and zero is zero but it will not assign to immediately so it is unknown 
ओके अंटिल टेन टाइम यूनिट इट इज ए अनोन आफ्टर ए डिले ऑफ टेन सो द वैल्यू ऑफ जीरो विल बी असाइंड सी दिस Again, after a delay of ten time minutes, so there is a value of change in in one and in two to one one. So now one and one is one, but this output immediately will not propagate. So it is taking a delay here of again ten time minutes because in the assign statement we have given the delay. So this one will be propagated here. Okay. Again here, so zero came. So in one is uh, changed to zero. So now zero and one is zero, but this again takes a delay of here. 10 time minutes okay so see this difference of change in output so this is about the regular assignment delay okay so in the regular continuous assignment statement we are providing the delay and this is how it will be observed in the waveform so next we will see the second type uh, before that some observations we will look at from this so when signals in one into goes high at the time of 20 out goes to high 10 time minutes later okay that is at 30 So when in one goes low at 60, out changes to low at 70. However, in one changes to high at 80, but it goes down to low before 10 time minutes have elapsed. So that same thing I have explained in the uh, waveforms. So that is there in the sentences here. Okay. So for your reference. Okay. So thus, out gets the value zero. A pulse of width less than the specified assignment delay is not propagated to the output. Okay. Next, we will see implicit continuous assignment delay. an equivalent method is to use an implicit continuous assignment to specify both a delay and an assignment on the net okay so for example so previous case we have declared a wire out and then we have assign okay out with a delay 10 in one and it so this can be written in a single line single sentence like this okay how wire hash 10 Out in one and in two. So here, nowhere assign keyword is not used, right? So this assign keyword is not used in this sentence. The meaning here it is implicit. Implicitly assign is called because wire hash ten you have written out equal to in one and in two you have written. Okay. So this is the implicit continuous assignment delay. Okay. So there is much no much things to explain. So like this also you can write. The declaration above has the same effect as the defining a wire out. and declaring a continuous assignment on out okay so that is about the implicit hope you have understood so then the third one is net declaration delay a delay can be specified on a net when it is declared without putting a continuous assignment on the net if a delay is specified on a net out then any value change applied to the net out is delayed accordingly so net declaration delays can also be used in a gate level modeling so this is net delay here so this is uh, nothing but so wire out so this is the previous statement again i am writing so this is the previous statement okay so this statement can be written like this okay in the net declaration delay so where you are declaring out there only we are specifying the delay hash 10 and then just a statement as it is we are writing assign out equal to in one and in two which is same as this statement wire out then specifying a delay at here so this is called as implicit net declare sorry net declaration delay we call okay so just look at this example again and again so that you will understand okay you can pause for a moment okay so looks like confusing but it is not so difficult okay so this is the regular one we will be writing regular delay now this is implicit so where you are declaring only you are specifying the delay here as 10 and here i am not writing assign this i have removed and i have put it over here okay so this is called as net declaration delay just a some modification so this is about the delay part so next we will uh, look at the expressions operands and operators in data flow model which is the very fundamental okay things in here expressions operators and operands okay so data flow modeling describes the design in terms of expressions okay instead of primitive gates that's what i told you in the beginning itself so in the gate level modeling you used to write logic symbol truth table boolean expression logic diagram and then one to one correspondence in gate level description right now we have completed the gate level description and now we have come to one step abo that is data flow modeling so data flow modeling we will not look at the logic diagram we will just look at the boolean expression okay 
so this expression will be written in verilog now for that you require the knowledge of operators okay so that part we are going to do in the next okay next video we'll be looking at different various operator types but now at the instance i will just define what is meant by an expression what is meant by an operator in general and what is meant by an operands this i am going to define here okay so that is the basis of data flow modeling okay so how primitive gates are basis in gate level modeling similarly these three expression operators and operands are the basis for data flow modeling so this is having one to one correspondence with your boolean expression okay so when we model real time circuits you will understand this sentences okay so expression expressions are construct that combine operators and operands to produce a results okay so this you have gone through in all the programming language nothing to much worry so now here a and b are operands and this is an xor operator okay so this operator knowledge will give you in the next video in detail operator types so a xor b so this is an expression okay it is a combination of operands and operators okay then similarly it can be part of the vector right so address 1 20 to 17 address 2 20 to 17 will be added so these two becomes here operands and this is the operator plus is the operator similarly in one or into so for or this is the operator okay so these operators you should be learning here in data flow modeling how we have learned various primitive gates in verilog similarly we have to learn operators now so that you will so these remaining things you have understood operands means just the names you are giving identifiers okay and vectors these things you have understood okay so now we have to understand here is operators okay so that is what the focus in this uh, module okay or unit hope you have understood what is meant by an expression now so now similarly we will define operands operands can be any one of the data types defined earlier so that a x or b i told you that a and b can be an integer it can be a wire it can be a register okay any data type we have mentioned earlier some construct will take only certain types of operands some of the construct will take only certain types of operands so operands can be it can be constants okay it can be integers it can be real numbers like float it can be nets it can be registers it can be time it can be bit select as we have seen previously address 1 address 0 like that one bit of vector net or a vector register you can use or a part select as we have seen in previous example 20 to 17 part select okay selected bits of the vector net or register vector and memories or function calls also can be used as the operands okay so be careful about this okay so this is about the operands now we define examples of operands here okay plenty of examples are given for your understanding what is operands integer count comma final count so final count equal to count plus 1 so here count is an integer operand because it is declared as integer here okay so that's how then real abc okay c equal to a minus b that means here a and b are real operands okay a and b are real operands and they are subtracted so to store that result also should be real okay here result also should be integer Okay. that's why it is also declared integer here also it is declared real okay then uh, we have told bit select right so register 15 is to 0 register 1 register 2 two registers are there they are having 16 bit okay size okay or vector in that register out okay so the output is only 4 bit okay so now we are doing the part select so register out means it is having only 4 bit capacity so now we are selecting here register 1 3 is to 0 and register 2 3 is to 0 that means only the least significant four bits are xor the operator is xor here so these two becomes operands here okay register 1 3 is to 0 are part select register here because its the size is 15 is to 0 in that only the four so like now you have 1111 okay so 16 bit you have So this is a 16-bit group of 4, 4, 4, 4. If I consider, 
okay so this four bit only the last four bits are added here okay so this is nothing but this capacity is 16 bit it's only part of the bits we are doing the addition or uh, as a, some operation we are doing like xor okay that is called as part select as we have seen earlier next another example we have register return value it can be a register return value is equal to this is a function call calculate parity a comma b so here a and b are the uh, values okay and uh, we have to calculate the parity of a and b so the values so calculate parity is a function type operand okay so like that also we can have okay so these are the different examples of operands so next we will define operators operators on the act on the operands to produce desired results okay so they are interrelated in the expression itself we told it is a combination of operands and operators so to do operation you require operands okay so the same way operators will act on the operands to produce results so verilog provides various types of operators so this is our interest we'll take up in the next video okay the big classification of operators we have for the sake now just we'll show some examples here the operators how we use it okay so here i have done d1 double ampersand so this you have not seen so far no so this is a double ampersand is an operator on operands d1 and d2 and there is a clear difference between double ampersand and single ampersand that we are going to learn in the next video okay then negation of a of 0 so this symbol is for once complement okay or negation okay is an operator on operand You have zero. It is a single operand here, and this is the operator. Okay, so once uh, uh, one bit operator we call right. Then B. So this is called as a right shift operator. Okay, we'll learn it in the next video. But this is an example here. So one is a constant here, and B is a variable. Okay, so these are two operands, and in between operator is used. Okay, is an operator on operands B and one. Okay, so this is about the uh, what we have planned for today uh, discussion. so what we have seen we have specified the delays to the regular assignment uh, statement then implicit continuous assignment statement and the net declaration okay and then we have seen the definition of what is meant by expression operands and operators with an example okay in the next video we will look at this various types of operators the big class is there so that we are going to discuss so once you have that knowledge so you can write your own program or whatever program you have written in data gate level modeling the same thing you can model now using data flow modeling and the logic synthesis tool will give you the same logic gate level circuits it will produce okay so that is what the understanding okay.